So in this video, we're going to talk about the concept of the Doppler effect. And one of my favorite ways to visualize the Doppler effect is to think about when you listen to a siren go by. So let's think about, as an example, let's use a fire truck. So this is the fire truck. All right, and let's give it some wheels. And the fire truck will say, the fire truck will have a siren typically on the top, right? And typically that siren will release some sound, right? Now, sound is a wave, and as all waves, it comes in the form of a wave with frequency and a wavelength. So as that sound is coming out of the fire truck, so let's draw the let's draw the wave. So it comes out in the form of a wave, right? But what's going to happen to an observer who's standing over here in front of the fire truck is that what's going to happen is that to him that wave is going to seem like it's getting compressed. So to an observer standing in front of the fire truck, as it's coming toward him, it's going to seem so it's going to seem like it's getting compressed. So the wave is going to look like this. Right? And from the back, from somebody who's standing behind it, so the fire truck is moving away from him, it's going to, he's going to perceive the opposite. He's going to perceive that the wave is much more stretched out. Uh, and we can think about it in terms of, we can think of that this is like a spring. We can think that the spring here, as the truck is moving this way, the spring here is getting kind of compressed between the person. And so it's getting compressed this way. And so it's uh, it's getting scrunched up. So it's, the spring is very tight. And as it's coming, going this way, and because it's moving away from the from the observer here, we can think that the spring is kind of, getting uh, stretched out on this side. And uh, that's not entirely far from the truth. It's not quite, uh, the analogy is still an analogy, but we can think about it in that way. And so this is what the waves are gonna look like if we draw them out. And so if we draw out the waves, this is what they look like. And that means from a mathematical standpoint, what are the values that we're talking about here? Well, we're talking here about frequency, right? We're talking about frequency. So we can see that of these two waves, this one and this one, one of, they have different frequencies, right? This one is much more uh, is much more dense, I guess we could say. It's much more dense. And so from a from a mathematical standpoint, the mathematical value is that this this one on the right, this one on the right has a much higher frequency. So the frequency here is much higher. And the frequency here is much lower. So in general, for the purposes of the MCAT, we don't quite need to, we don't need to know mathematically how to do the calculation. There is a formula, and the formula, you probably learned it in your physics class, and you can look it up online, and it might be interesting to look it up online, because it might be interesting to, to understand some of the specific concepts, but you don't need to know those for the MCAT. What you, all you need to know for the MCAT is that as the, um, as the source of the sound is moving toward an observer, the frequency increases. And as the source of the sound is moving away from the observer, the frequency decreases. And so if that's what happens to frequency, then what is it that will happen to wavelength? So wavelength, we know wavelength is just the inverse of frequency. So the formula C or the speed is equal to uh, is equal to frequency times wavelength. And that means that, that frequency and wavelength are inverses. That means as frequency increases, wavelength decreases, and vice versa. And so in this case, if we were to write these out, we would say that wavelength here increases. And we would say that frequency, or I'm sorry, we would say that wavelength in this case decreases. And so it's just the inverse of what the what happens to the frequency, right? Uh, fairly straightforward. And so this is the concept that we have. Now, this the the, the last point I want to make before um, for, for this uh, topic is 
that this is all relative. The movement is all relative. So that means that, that the truck is moving relative to the observer, right? Is moving toward the observer, relative to the observer. Uh, if the, we were in a situation where both of them were moving, right? So for example, let's say you very unwisely, I might add, decided to take your car. So let's actually use a different color so it's not be confusing. Um, and let's do, let's do this dark blue. Let's say you decided to take your car and you decided to chase, this is a very badly drawn car. Let's say you decided to take your car and you decided to chase after the ambulance or the fire truck. Uh, and you, you were driving at the same rate as the ambulance or the fire truck, right? Um, well, if you're driving at the same rate, then, then that wave is not neither going to be compressed, nor is it going to be stretched. It's just going to be the same wave as it was before, right? Uh, so that's one concept. And the reverse is also true. If you're driving, if you decided to, <laughs> uh, let's say you got on a car chase, for example, and a um, fire truck is chasing you. I don't know why a fire truck would be chasing you. Maybe your car is on fire. Um, and so if you're being chased by a car, by a fire truck, by the siren, then again, you're gonna, you're, if you're driving at the same speed, you're gonna hear that siren at the same speed. And so the, the, the distortion or the Doppler effect is what this is called. The Doppler effect uh, only is, is a concept that is relative. It, it has to do with the speed of the object or the speed of the, um, the speed of the source of the sound relative to the speed of the observer. And if the speed of the source and the observer are moving at the same speed, then it looks as though neither one is moving. For the purposes of the Doppler effect, it's the same effect as though neither one were moving. And, um, and then the reverse is also true. If we're moving toward the, the source, then, uh, then we end up with a frequency. Essentially, what we could say is that if the distance between us and the source is decreasing, then uh, the frequency is higher. And if the distance between us and the source is, uh, is increasing, then the frequency is lower. And uh, that's, we really need to understand this conceptually for the MCAT. We don't really need to understand um, specifics. And so the last point I want to make is what are, how do we, how would we calculate the precise frequency? Well, the answer is there are a couple of variables that we would use. So number one, we would use the velocity of the wave. The velocity of the wave is important. Uh, and then number two, we would use frequency Frequency, let's say we, we, we would use the frequency of the sound, of the source. And the last thing we would use is, the last variable we would want is the velocity. The last, last set of variables we would want, I guess, is the velocity of the source, and that would be our fire truck. And then number four, if this were the case, we would want the velocity of the observer. And so this is the concept of the Doppler effect. Again, mathematically, the, the math of it, um, although it might be interesting, is not required for the MCAT. The MCAT will not test you on the specific math of it, but it will test you on the concepts. And I think understanding the concept of the Doppler effect is very crucial. So again, this is more of a conceptual question. This is more of a conceptual topic, uh, but understanding it is very crucial. Uh, it's a reasonably highly tested concept on the MCAT, and um, I hope you guys understand.